Kitty is our guest for Photon uh, um, uh, on this particularly nasty day weather-wise. But um, I was wondering uh, how important you are a Liverpool boy, a scouser. Uh, how uh, important a part did living in that city at the beginning of your career play? Well, it well it for it 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 formed everything. I mean, I was I started off by professionally photographing the things that, that, that were around me and and those things at the time of the of the music scene of the city, which obviously the city's pretty well known for. Yeah. So it, you know, it's a, it it sort of formed me in, in that sort of way. I got into music and photography at the same time, really. So it. Yeah, it was sort of the start of everything. I think if if it had been anywhere else, it would have been very different, or at least it would have sounded very different anyway. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that um, photographers uh, um, uh, find difficult uh, is access and access to bands and access to clubs, etc., and venues. Uh, how did you go about it in the beginning? I used to just take my camera to gigs, but from from the audience... Whichever gigs and the the first gigs I went to were pretty biggish gigs. Um, that was you know I, I'd start taking pictures when I was fourteen, so I was too young to go to, to sort of nightclubs and the smaller gigs. But I'd go to I just kind of try and take pictures from the audience, and you know they, they were rubbish. Um, <laughs> and then just I just wanted I'd always have this thing oh, I just want to be a photographer. I want to, you know I'm going to just you know I just kept taking pictures when it when I got to sort of late. Teens had started hanging around in the, the music scene in Liverpool with mm -hmm. my friends that got into bands and mm -hmm. we were just into the music. So we were sort of, I just started photographing the things that, that, that were around me really. And I, I ended up in a band for about five minutes um, and through these, some friends, who, you know, they, they got us on this festival, our first gig on this little festival in, uh, well, it was quite a big festival actually, but it was, uh, I, so I got a pass for the weekend and I, I left the gig. We we did this our first gig on this festival and I le left halfway through playing. I wasn't. I just didn't think it was very good, so I just put my guitar down and left. And uh, but I had a I had a photo pass, so it was my first sort of photo pass. And I stayed, you know, went back over the weekend and photographed some of the other bands. Uh, and how do you cope with? I mean, I've done a, a few gigs, Green Man especially, where uh, you get into the pit, you got your pass, you get into the pit and it's uh, three uh, three songs and you're out. Uh, how do you cope with that situation? Because it's, it's quite a pressurised situation, I guess. And, uh, you know, bands haven't warmed up. So uh, how do you deal with that as a phot photographer? Sometimes, every now and again, you'll get a band that says you can take as many pictures as you want stay in for the whole gig Mm. And after three songs, I'm like, "What am I going to do now?" Because I'm, <laughs> I'm really, th I'm really thrown by it. Everything's, everything's three songs. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so I, I only sort of it only bothers me when it, it it becomes less than three songs. Yeah. It's just the way, just the the the, the way I am really, uh, and 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 years and years of it. So you know, when somebody. You know, every you know, because three songs is okay. But every now and again, you'll get somebody who says, "Oh, you can only do two songs," or hmm. you know, have a people. You can do you know two songs from one side of the pit, and you've got to choose which side, and you've got to make that decision of which side of the pit you've got to, you know, and those sort of things. And but no, three songs is to me, you know, it's just plenty. You know, I think. And do you take pictures? Do you take pictures of bands that you like, uh, and are you acquainted with their music before you start photographing? Sometimes, I mean, I, I, when I started off, I, I, I didn't gravitate towards the live side of things. Although that was the first thing I sort of photographed was a, a festival. I, I really enjoyed the sort of portrait side of it, and I sort of did both. Mm -hmm. And then we were going through that whole sort of late eighties, nineties rave scene. So I photographed that, which was very different, but it was live, and it was it was things that were happening. Yeah. All, out of all the bands that you photographed, uh, I mean, uh, the obvious uh, cliche question is, who did you enjoy photographing most? Quite often the ones that I don't like. <laughs> um, I mean, that's going back to where you just just asking. I don't, I, you know, it's, uh, sometimes I'll go and, oh, I really want to photograph this band or, the, you know, like friends are in bands and I want to photograph their bands yeah. or whatever. You know. But then there's other bands that you just don't, 
don't like. <laughs> and then you know you sort of just end up yeah you know so some 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 of the ones that have I've not really thought about being the you know being the best ones so it's you know I can still I guess I'm still separating the visual from the from the from the band really yeah no because it's you know I, it's really interesting as well because you mixed uh, um, photographing bands with photographing. Uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, and there's sort of uh, there's a huge difference, I guess. How did you gravitate to that sort of work? Uh, well, they're what, just what? they're just a bigger band. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, and I'm and I'm older. I mean, um, you know, I don't want to go to nightclubs anymore. Uh, <laughs> Liverpool in two thousand and and eight um, was was the European capital of culture. Yes. And actually, it was bef- before that they the Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra had brought in a, a new conductor, Vasily Petrenko, and I was doing a lot of fashion photography at the time. Okay, and a lot of stylized sort of portraiture with 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 bands, with musicians, and people, and and they just wanted they they wanted me to come in and do something with with this conductor. Yeah, uh, so I did that, and then two thousand. They they sort of launched his his career in Liverpool with these with this with the campaign with these photographs and then two thousand and eight came along and they started asking me to photograph you know there's just a lot of things going on in the city so I just ended up doing a lot of work that year in, in documenting culture and that so the the orchestra brought me in then and I I just yeah as I've, I've done a lot of work with them since. Yeah, it's fabulous work, and uh, um, and black and white as well, which is really uh, really nice. Uh, a very animated uh, conductor. I've seen some of the shots. I'm looking at some of the shots here. Quite animated. How did you find working with such a a big band? Because it's massive, isn't it? You know, and lots of things happening. And so, where did you kind of position yourself? How did you find the right positions, the right angles to take the photographs? Well, it's again. I mean, and it's all. I've been around touring with them as well and the different countries have different rules it's harder than the sort of three songs no flash in many ways because you don't photograph the orchestra actually playing at yeah. times a lot of the time you you don't so in liverpool at the time because we're shooting on like dsl dslrs and they, they were yeah, nikons they were loud and and that so they, you know the new cameras are quieter but we, we sometimes we do a lot of other photography around this so a lot of backstage photography and yeah that, but you generally weren't photographing the actual concerts. I did. I used to go to. We'd done a few gigs at the, like the um, the Albert Hall for the BBC Proms. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you in there, you shoot in these. It, you go in the doors, and then you, there's a curtain in front of you, and you have to sort of find the <laughs> split in the curtain, and you know, there's like. And, and photograph through this hole in, in this curtain sort of thing, you know, over someone's head who sat there and, you know, and I hope for the the louder moments. And there's a, there's a, a great photographer who covers them, who yeah. covers all of the, the proms. And on the first time, he, he sort of took me around and he's saying, OK, this you can do it from so many boxes or so many doorways. But he's saying, well, in this one, the, try and do it from the left because the, the floorboard's on the right creek, so it's that sort of... OK. You know, so it's 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 difficult in a very different way. You know, it's not it's very quiet. That's yeah. one of so, you know, it's trying to deal with that. Yeah, with the with the uh, orchestra. So, were you photographing rehearsals? We've 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 done. I, I used to do a lot of rehearsals and hmm. go on tour, and you do the rehearsals, and then you do hmm. the concert, or you might just do. You might go in for an encore and and capture a bit because it's you know it's a lot less sort of you know it depends on the, on the, you know the, the the culture in different countries and how they deal with their classical audiences are different. In Spain, they put me be in a, in a this this hundred degree room and sh- I had to shoot through glass. Oh gosh! And right. uh, every everywhere's just yeah everywhere's different. I usually, really used to love the the uh, I love the backstage sort of side. Of, yes. of classical because yeah. that is when they're all sort of warming up in the backstage and you're sort of doing that documentary thing I really enjoyed yeah that's fabulous uh, <clears throat> I suppose um, it kind of um, in a weird way um, uh, gets on to Bjork and the pictures you took of Bjork how did that come about? when I was starting off from photographing clubs there was a couple of magazines dj magazine and mix mag id the face magazines like that and they were going mm. at the time and some still are. um i'd start photographing the scene in liverpool and sending pictures off and mm. then i'd send some portraits off and then you know they just they, they mix mag did 
trusted me with a cover. I think with the first, I think the first one I did was a hip hop band called House of Pain that was shot in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Bjork was the second one, maybe. You know, so it was. Uh, yeah, so it was a it was a front cover for a, for for a magazine. What was the secret of getting her to do what you wanted to do, or was she receptive to a photographer and willing to to try? Really anything? receptive. I, I'm a little bit. I'm not the type of person to be asking people to do something out of their zone or their sort of comfort zone type thing. Um, yeah. Coming up with grand concept ideas for portraits, I like. You know, it's quite sort of. Might, I might go in with ideas and locations, ideas for lighting and stuff, but keep it quite sort of. But the magazine had sort of come in with this idea that everything she was doing at the time, she'd not long moved to London, but everything that sort of before maybe sugar cubes years or something it was all quite serious, yeah. and they were just like, can, you know, can we get, get her to just pull faces and you know. She didn't have a reputation of it, you know. I don't. I don't remember how well I knew of her at the time as to whether she was really famous or whatever. But so I don't think it really phased me. I said I asked her like, "Could you could you go gauzy?" And she was like, "I don't know what gauzy means." So I was like, "Like cross-eyed." <laughs> so she just started pulling all these faces, and she just you know she just did. It. I mean, we were shooting on medium format, and I think I shot it was three rolls of film. Mom, right. So it's like what forty-five pictures or something on, on, and every one of them is just a completely you know different face. But you know, yeah, yeah she was she was she was lovely. Very no no makeup artist, no no stylist or fuss or any of that sort of thing at the right. time. And what about? I mean, there are gatekeepers everywhere in the music industry. Um, and um, did you find that sort of stressful getting through an amount of time you had with with artists? Yeah, I mean, I went to Tokyo, had 90 seconds to shoot a front cover with Jamira Cry in the rain oh. while someone held an umbrella over him to keep out every bit of light that was there. It was, it was, it, it was a, you know, it wasn't great. So, yeah, there's those sort of things. And they, they, I, I don't do a lot of that sort of thing so much these days. So I know, but I know, I could imagine it being so, I know it's so much more difficult. You know, all types of access is difficult and protection of image and all that sort of thing. Yes, yes. Um, but, you, you know, most of the time it was, you know, yeah. easy. I, I love your picture of Vivian Westwood as well. Um, how, what sort of character was she? And how receptive was she to the camera? Lovely. I, do you know, that? F- I, I, I remembered this a while back and I, I, wrote, I wrote it down um, and, and the story of... The photograph. The photograph was a, that this was a like a ninety second portrait. Mm-hmm. She was opening a shop in Liverpool, um, the, the Vivian Westwood shop on Matthew Street, and it was one of those media days. But I was I was asked to do it for a local magazine, but I had to leave another shoot to come and do it. So I, I was like, I need to I need to come in and I need to go. And they were all really nice, but the whole the shop was like it was the the shop was opening that night. The caterers were in, the painters were still in. They were all they were dressing all the dummies. There was TV crews. It was, it was just this mad circus. And in the middle of it was this. They wanted a picture of her in in, in the shop, and I, I just sort of didn't. Well, I didn't include the shop because it was for an editorial. I just didn't, you know. Uh, but it just... I, I wish I'd taken a picture of the wider scene because it was complete bedlam. And <laughs> I, I think I took about like six to ten photographs and just, yeah, it, it looks quite st- like some sort of studio and staged and, and she just went into this complete, very sort of professional sort of thing. I, I, I guess expecting a picture of a lovely shot behind her, but, yeah, it was... Yeah. Uh, so on longer shoots and longer portraits that you do, um, what's the key for you uh, of the relationship with the sitter? It's all very... They're all they're all different, but some of the best ones are, are sort of those ones where you, where you might get a bit of time. You know, the arts might not... They might not have that sort of protection. But even if you don't... I mean, it's, it's, it's getting that level of trust is the, is, the, is the first thing. Yeah. And not wanting to waste any time that you've been given but where time isn't really an issue and say I'm not I'm spending an hour even if it's just just to do a portrait or something then you know sometimes you'll just end up talking for 50 minutes and then yes, taking yeah. a picture for two yeah and it's, it's you know it's like and it's trying to condense that sort of 
thing into a, that sort of idea into a, a, a much smaller amount of time by just trying to find some sort of connection or a chat with somebody you've never met, you know, very early on to try and... Yeah, I find that uh, uh, doing portraits um, is um, that actually sometimes the the conversation is almost more important than the picture, and uh, the conversation leads to a good picture. Exactly. If... Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I've just I've just done a series of portraits in Colwyn Bay towards the end of last year. It was it was a sort of answer type thing or in response type project that Paul from Oriel Common had put together and it was about you know Daniel Meadows the the omnibus being 50 years yes. old and he was shown the, the photographs up in in Bayview shopping centre there's some of the photographs up there so we did we did a set up a studio for I think it was four days and just wow. invited shoppers people passing by in and sometimes you've got a queue you know you've got like five people or want the picture taken and and you still want that sort of you don't want them to just sort of stand there and like you know it's, it's they didn't know they were having their picture taken two minutes before and then it's sort of like so you've still got to gain that confidence and and sort of yeah. whilst there's somebody else waiting around the corner yeah. so you're having those like really 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 short sort of yeah uh, micro sessions but but still trying to get something out of it that's that, yeah that's some sort of character or personality yeah uh, it's interesting as well that you do theater work and uh, i um i've done a bit of theater work myself and i find uh, a fascinating uh, way to work because you have the lights are, are all there for you you know you don't have to worry about that sort of thing do you go into uh, dress rehearsals is that what generally you do or uh, or do you do setups at all with the actors i never do setups mm -hmm. um and i don't know if that's the sort of I don't. Does that happen? These I don't days think it does. No, no. I, I know it used to. Yeah, yeah. Because I just know that it's one of those things that. But I get sometimes like a director say, and if we need to set it up, we'll set it up. <laughs> and you, yeah, you sort of you get obviously you, yeah, digital. You know, you get to preview the work you've done along, yes. along over ninety minutes, two hours, or whatever was. So you, which you wouldn't have been able to have done. Yeah. before so you may be more likely to sort of stage things but no I, I tend to just yeah i just sit there and as they run it as they run their dress rehearsal yeah that's kind of that, that can be quite uh scary at times doing dress rehearsals because you uh in some cases you won't know the play or what they're actually going to be doing on or where they're going to be coming from or how they interact with each other uh <clears throat> So it's uh, it really is flying by the seat of your pants as a photographer. It, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's like, I mean, you, yeah, it's uh, especially the faster things. I mean, when something's nice and slow and it's <laughs> sort of, you know, I always sort of ask the, it was one of the first things I always want to know from the directors of the things that aren't going to happen again. It's that sort of all yes. those moments that are going to happen once. And the, and the hardest ones are pantos. Yes. And things like that, <laughs> yeah. Because you know, there's going to be a confetti bomb that happens twice, <laughs> and, and, and it's like at, at some point, it'll be somewhere in this song, probably in the chorus, and then, and then there's 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 those people that sort of the chorus that jumps and does the splits, and you you want them right up in the air. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a very very interesting um, uh, thing working in the theatre. I, I really enjoy it. I've done it for a long time now. It's great. I did a nice, I did a like Cir Cirque du Soleil type thing. Oh, was it? yeah. But Cirque, de, I'm going to say this wrong, but glass like glaze, like like on ice. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, oh, wow. And they just booked me and they went along and then they, they want we did have to stage some of those because it was like. And they were like, oh, if you want to come up, I had loafers on, I had to go on the ice. <laughs> and I was like, it's <laughs> like, what? I said, my feet were freezing. But, um, yeah. Uh, out of those three genre of photography, which do you feel most comfortable in? Or are you happy with them all? Genre as in what, theatre? Uh, theatre, music, music portrait. yeah. yeah. I get bored quickly. So I just I like I, I document mostly culture. I mostly work in arts yes. and culture. Yes. 
Um, but I also do more commercial work as well. And yeah, but yeah, I, I, I see. I, I see a lot of culture. I know. I, I like that mixture between. I work in, with a great venue up in in Chester called Story House, and they just everything's different. They just right. do so many different types of things. Yeah. Don't they? They do outdoor theatre and yeah. Yeah. They do indoor and all these different festivals. They have little music festivals, and yeah. so yeah, I get I get to see a lot, and I sort of I sort of I'm spoiled, and I enjoy that sort of variety. Yeah, I think and, I'm used to it. Uh, and living in North Wales, your know, access to uh, Liverpool, Manchester, or uh, Chester, all those places you have access to really as a as a photographer. Yeah, I still do a lot. I, I most of my work. The work, you know, when I work for myself, I'm trying to do more work locally in North Wales, but mm. still just about nearly all my work is my old clients and I just get, I get the train back. <laughs> I love the train journey on the coast. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, so I work sometimes in Manchester, a lot in Liverpool, some a lot in Chester. Yeah. yeah. I love the stuff you've done with the land, you know. There's some uh, really cool stuff. And again, you have access to land in North Wales. You know, uh, Carnethai, uh, Carnethai p- ponies, you've done quite a lot with them. Yeah, there's... They're the, they're the, it's the first... Yeah, they're just... Well, we just walk... Luckily, to walk, we can just walk out of the house and they're up a yeah. big hill behind us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went... I've been photographing them as I, you know, when I go out up there and I go out there all the time. Um, and then towards the end of last year, we went on a, a thing called the gathering where they sort of bring them yes. all in off, off the mountain, which was just, oh, it's just an incredible sight. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what sort of a, a rapport did you have with the, with the farmers who, uh, you know, the, and the people who own, own the, the animals? They sort of, they invited this was i mean i'd seen people going up there and i didn't really know what the sort of the score was in going up yeah and then a friend of ours who works in the arts was taking people up and there's like oh you just take people up yeah yeah we've got a minibus and we're gonna take people up and it was they sort of i don't know if it's a transparency thing so that we can see what they do because that, you know, some people are like, "Why do? Why do you round up the ponies or whatever?" And yeah. so I think I don't know if it's a part of a transparency thing, but I, I know that when we were up there, that we all ended up being part of the sort of, <laughs> you know, it was like, right. So if you could all stand in a line across this hill, <laughs> it's like, well, I've come to take pictures, but so the next thing is, it's like, yeah, I put your arms out <laughs> if they come towards you, and it's like, oh, okay, so we're, yeah, so we're actually needed here. So yeah, I don't, I don't, not quite sure we were needed, but felt like we were, yeah, made to feel like we were needed. So yeah, yeah, it. it's very, it's very strange. Uh, um, sort of uh, uh, that um, they use quad bikes to. I mean, they would have been on the backs of ponies, wouldn't they? Gathering the the other ponies down from the mountain. So it's uh, I always find quad bikes. They, they they use them for sheep gathering, you know, and um, uh, <clears throat> and I guess. Uh, they have their uses as, uh, but uh, very odd that you have motorbikes when you could jump on the back of a pony, I guess. But there we are. How long? I don't know how long it takes. Uh, yeah, I don't think you do it as quick, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. And do you like horses? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> not in that sort of. No, I'm not one of those sort of. No, no. no my mum used to have a, Yeah, my mum used to go horse riding and things, but yeah. no, I've never, never had a sort of. I just find it. I just found it fascinating. Just part of what what was yeah. Just on our, in, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in your blurb, you talk about that you're a, you like you like cameras and uh, you know the cameras and uh, the kit. Uh, but you do have a, a section on uh, your website called Diana World Ongoing. Why is Diana so? Uh, why do you find it so attractive as a, a medium to take photographs? I think I can't, because I come from a, you know, I've shot film till, I don't know, early noughties, isn't it, that they call it? Yeah, yeah sort of. Yeah. You know, I've not got back into shooting on film. Yeah. But I think I sort of miss the, you know, you know everything, everything sort of, you know, everything with digital, you know, I don't really, I couldn't do it with work. Because mm. you know, so I, I just quite like. I think it's quite. I just quite like that sort of random. I'm not knowing what's going to come what's out of this. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just something that's quite fun. 
also into sort of uh, wildlife birds. I mean, you're a pretty eclectic sort of gatherer of uh, images. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I mean, the, the birds is not a, it's not a thing I've. Uh, yeah, I, I I photographed them through the window in lockdown. Right. I mean, I don't even want to talk about lockdown now because it seems, you know, as we've gone past those things. But a lot of people did sort of have you know, projects or whatever, and I just, yes. yeah, I just photographed the things I saw through the window. I did actually go out the house, but um, yeah, when I, I, that was my sort of thing of just photographing the birds on the bird table. And Brick Beach is another favourite of mine. <laughs> Bricks. Who would have thought, eh? <laughs> Do you know that? And they've got, they've got, well, they've got one here in Conwick. They've got one, they've got a brick. Well, they've all, yeah, there's there's brick beaches here, but not on that sort of scale. The, yeah, the, okay. the, the, there is, but then the amount of bricks that were left over in, in North Liverpool from, you know, from the Blitz or whatever. Yes. The, the sort yeah. of, the, the, the yeah. uh, it was just that was somewhere. That was almost like um, when I left Liverpool. I was like, oh, now I was meant to take pictures of the. You know, I always did take pictures of the big beach, but I just thought yeah. oh, I need to take more before I need to remember these. It's one of those places you just think, oh, will I ever go back? But I will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so and really nice things like um, Plaza reminds me of uh, the cinema I used to go to in uh, Swansea called the Plaza. It no longer exists, um, but the the kit inside old cinemas is just fascinating, absolutely amazing. And you you said earlier that you do video as well. Do you and, and are you are you practicing that a little bit more now, or how Quite do you find it? I've got out of it. Um, All right, I did it as a curiosity thing. I, I, right. you know, from a camera that I, I owned that was like, oh look, you can make video with this. You know, when they started putting video into SLRs, and it was like, yes. oh, just try it out, and then it was like. <laughs> I was on holiday and I was like, "Oh, I've been." No, actually, it wasn't. I bought a. I bought a. a, a, a I bought a, it. I was taking doing a video a long time before that. I was. I bought like a. I used to go to Love Parade in Berlin, which was a, a, a techno carnival, where up to a million people would be dancing to techno in. Good God! In, in the streets, uh, it was fantastic. So, as you could imagine, to photograph. Yeah. And but no matter what you did, photographic, I could never quite. When I got home to t tell people what it was like, I could never quite sort of. So I bought this video camera to record to film it. Yeah. Just to say, this is look. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> this, is, this is, you know, it's it, it's like just to try and capture a bit more of it than I could in the photographs. So I bought some sort of tape video sort of thing and um, VHS little mini mini whatever they're called. And uh, somebody, I was on holiday and I'd taken my laptop and these tapes and someone showed, who was an, a TV editor, was on holiday with us, showed me how to use, like, you know, iMovie or something to edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got really into the whole sort of thing. So when the DSLR started putting the video in, I got, so I got into it quite a, quite early on in that sort of, when they, when they, when DS, you know, the, Cameras had to put start putting videos in, um, and then just ended up doing lots of music videos and yeah. lots of yeah little short documentaries with musicians and yeah I made a, a film a documentary out in America I just started all kinds of things but <laughs> I've just um, I don't know I just I've done so much photography in recent years that I've just sort of said all right all I need to concentrate <laughs> again I get so distracted very easily. So from a work and a personal point of view, how does work work for you? Um, uh, and are you seeing uh, lots of photographers complain that work is not as much work um, and that the rates are not as good as they used to be? Uh, how do you find the whole sort of professional work area? I don't know. I've always... I've always been busy. I've always kept moving. I don't. There's plenty of things where I suddenly, oh, I'm not working with them anymore. I have no. Mm. Oh, they're sort of, you know, they all their budgets got cut and they're using somebody who's come in cheaper. And there's, yeah, there's yeah. all that sort of thing. But I, I'm always busy. So one way or another. Okay. So I just, just keep sort of. Yeah, I don't say. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think about it too much. You know. Yeah. I tell you one one of the th one of the things from your sort of professional work is a, a lovely poster called "From There to Here," and I think those portraits are just absolutely stunningly beautiful. 
Oh, uh, that was that was a nice project, like. Yeah, yeah. That was a really quite a long project as well. We all oh, was it? Did, we did quite a bit of work with them. You oh. know that the portraits was just one little bit of it, really. The, well, the, the portraits were people with learning difficulties. Yeah. It was an exhibition in the Museum of Liverpool and they were a theatre theater company that were looking at the way people with learning difficulties have been treated differently over the years. So, the, you know, it might have been the terminology or yes. the way they were hospitalised or, you know, and it, it just in different stages in history. So they go off into museums and look into archives. And yeah. so I did a lot of documentary work just sort of documenting their, their journey through that so that they could build an exhibition in a museum themselves. Yeah. So they and, have a and, the, and the portraits were sort of like the introduction bit of them, hmm. and we because it was a really serious exhibition. <laughs> it but was like, right, we've got this idea to do these really. So we're going to you're the you know the heroes, you're these puts, and then it fell apart. They were just like we just had a, such a laugh to them because we all sort of you know we just got on that they were they were just a lovely lovely yes. set of photographs there's a there's a there's lovely dignity about that photograph I, I i love it i think it's absolutely superb yeah very 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 good indeed if you had a, a choice of doing a specific project have you got ideas to, in your mind at the moment about things you want to do in the future loads <laughs> <laughs> too, <I> guess, <laughs> too many well, yeah. be, I'm going to mention lockdown again, but before lockdown, I had a couple that I was like very specifically stored and, and I sort of, uh, they, I couldn't because of it. So I keep going, oh, I want to go on them. But since then, I've had all these other ideas and there's, but they're not sort of, they're not anywhere. So I'm not going to, <laughs> I don't really want to go into them in any great sort of, you know, no. they're portrait based, they're in North Wales, they're sort right, of, okay. they're more local, they're, they're sort of. I've been here long enough now to start realizing that there's collections of pictures appearing. Yes, but I've also, you know, you start, you just keep gravitating towards places and yes, yeah. Oh, I've got, I'm going to go here, and you know, the next thing is, oh, I've got that. That's how the pony sort of comes about, and yeah. there's things like that. But there's also some sp specific things that I and I how much I'd like to do. How much research do you do before diving into a project? Uh, I mean, something like. Love Parade was just something that somebody asked me to go to and then okay. I got another job going to it and another one and then the next year I didn't get one and I was like, hold on, I'm going to... So I went back and then I just kept going back and that's the sort of... They end up getting... You know, that started off as, as work and ended up being a project. There was one I did with the libraries in, in Liverpool and that sort of went from... I just had an idea, I phoned them up and said, oh, yeah, could, whilst you're doing it, could you do some work for us? So that sort of, and then they all end up in, in, intertwined. So now I'm trying to sort of go, right, if I separate, do, I've got this idea, and I'm, you know, but then well, I'm sure, you know, that whole thing with balance and personal work and yeah. the work that you're commissioned to do is... Uh, yeah. So yeah. the fact when it becomes that type of work, the comp... You know the, the the things that I've got in mind specifically need to plan. They don't need a lot of planning. I've only got to go to Abergel and Rill. So it's, not, it's only just yeah. down the road from where I live. Not yeah, there. Rill is a wonderful place, and um, uh, uh, I spent some time in Rill. And I wish it was in the days before I was really. Um, I, although I sort of photographed a lot, I, uh, Rill was just an astonishing place. Um, and astonishing people there. Um, I was actually doing teacher training at the time, and I was staying in digs there, which that was a, uh, that was pretty wild as well. You know, the 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 lady who um, was looking after me, she would cook toast in the grill, and it was a gas grill, and the toast always tasted of gas. It was a stuff. It was a stuff. It was an astonishing is, is place. That, is that the first thing that you think of when you, you, you look yeah. back at real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. One of the things that I did for a while was I was working for a magazine called Plastic Rhino and I was the editor of the magazine. Yeah. And uh, we, the, the, every edition of the magazine, we changed the whole design. So there was a, it was a concept. It was a fashion magazine, a bit of music and popular culture, but everything, we changed the concept of the design and the theory behind it. Every, everything was changed in the magazine before yeah. we'd find the content. And the second magazine we did was, was going to be called Twin Town. Right. And it was, we were going to have it so that 
we were twin in Berlin with real. Oh, so it's going to be real what? from one side of the magazine and, and Berlin from the other. And we were, <laughs> we were in this cafe in Liverpool and talking about it one day and a mate of mine said, oh, yeah, keeping it real. And we're like, oh, genius, that's brilliant. Um, so we, But we couldn't think of anything funny for the other side, for the Berlin, so we, we scratched Berlin and we just did a, the whole magazine. It was like a walking tour of real. <laughs> so... And that's another again. That's an that's another thing that I keep meaning to go back and do a sort of return to real and go back and look at it. Yeah. I have been back, but I need to do. I mean, lots of exhibitions, Mark. Uh, lots of exhibitions in uh, Liverpool. A Berlin exhibition, um, and um, yeah, and Oriel Colwyn one. It would be really nice to see an exhibition down in Cardiff sometime, or down in South Wales. Wow, yeah, that would be lovely. I, I'm just. The, the one that was up here and the the one that went to Germany, I'm now working on a book about. All right. So that's supposed to be out last year, but yeah, I've not finished it because it's got a lot. It's got a lot of my sort of stories and words and things about the the actual process of taking the pictures. It's a you know it's th- it's called Thirty Five Summers and it's thirty five years of music, mostly wow. music photography. Wow, wow. So that should it will be out this year. <laughs> So did you keep a diary during that time? Uh, so or are, are they recollections? <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got, I did have diaries. I don't know how I did anything because I've gone through my diaries and I've moved my diaries into some sort of Excel, like an yeah, Excel document. And it'd say like Friday, Brussels, and then on the Monday it'd say return. And I was like, I don't, I don't know how I got there. Or what, what, <laughs> there's nothing... I don't know if I just wrote things down on pieces of paper which have long gone. I have got some notebooks with a few things, like an address of a hotel, but in them sort of days before everything. So I'm at the moment sort of piecing everything together and sort of... Yeah. And how do you find the process of putting a book together? It can be uh, quite difficult in, in many respects. So do you enjoy that process? I enjoy putting collections of photographs together, but I enjoy this most of the time, this one. But this is, a, I mean, this is... 35 years of trying I'm um, yeah trying to piece it into a, a thing it's amazing of that there's a period of time between keeping paper diaries and com- and the cloud when we all started getting into computers and trusting computers to save the information in diaries or calendars that mm-hmm. those computers have long gone mm-hmm. so there's there's a there's a period in between the old when you know you used to keep everything on paper and now that the cloud saves everything conveniently for you everywhere you go there's a middle bit which is like what was i doing <laughs> you know i didn't even when i got into started shooting digital i wasn't even i don't even remember if i set the clock on the camera you know because you didn't set clocks on old car- on film cameras so no, no, no. Yeah, rocket ships and windmills. And I must admit, I haven't seen one of your books, but I will seek them out. Uh, rocket ship and windmills. I've seen the bits on your website and stuff. So where did that idea come from? We were hungover, my mates, a few of my mates, and we just went to Southport and, um, as you do, play crazy golf. Yes. And I was like, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a book. I'm gonna do a project about this. I'm gonna take pictures of crazy golf courses, and I just like I really like the architecture of them, or the sort of you know, yeah. especially the real old-fashioned sort of Arnold Palmer yeah. style proper old-fashioned crazy golf courses. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so we just spent some partner sort of. We went off camp, you know, like in the summer and that, just going off around different seaside resorts and photographing. Yeah. Se- searching them out. And how do you find working with publishers? Because, um, uh, I mean, that is a, a kind of art in itself as well, isn't it? Um, and knowing what they want. and Yeah, I don't think I've ever done it properly. Not in the way that maybe, not in the way the photography sort of, there was a design agency that came to me and wanted to publish rocket ships. You know, I was working with them on other things and we were talking yes. about it. And I got this idea and they said, oh, we'll do it. We'll put it out. So it was like... Wow, right, okay. um, and the same sort of happened with the, with this new one, thirty five summers, and I had a book out called Pop Cultured in two thousand and eight, which was music, and that was you know through because of Liverpool being capital culture, and it was a university press that put it out. So it's I, I've never really a, approached publishers in the way you normally may as a photographer approach them. I've been pretty lucky. Blogging, uh, you do a bit of blogging. How important is that for you? When it 
when it comes nat- naturally, I, I, I can I can do it and I enjoy it. Um, I can't I can't write to order. So I'm, I'm working on a book of thirty five summers and it's been taking forever. But when we 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 did the the exhibition in Oriel Colwyn, it got late on. It well, it was it was beginning of December and I decided to write about the images. And I was going to do it as an advent calendar, as a sort of on social media. So I just posted something, but I'd forgot to. I didn't get round to doing it on the on the the first of December until ten o'clock at night. And I just I threw something together, and then the next morning I got, I got up and there was like all this reaction. There was loads of people talking about it, and it sparked all this sort of this conversation that had come from the photographs. So and then I I did twenty. Five days or whatever Advent you sort of, and then it was it was we went out at Christmas and just people were like oh I love that you know and it was like and the, the, the conversations just got really really big around this sort of the the, the nostalgic aspect of you know it, it was like a, my my words it was a bit of a starting point and it was that so that's how the, what the next this this book's going to be it's going to be a chronological book of my work in mostly music but it's also going to be sort of stories behind the photographs you know mm-hmm. that sounds awful stories behind the photographs but it's that sort of, you know it's not it's not quite a techie book but it it's you know it's a bit it's not a tell all backstage type thing but it, it it's just them sort of it's just the things i remember i only i remember really random things like yeah. a like a saying i've got a diary that says like you know friday such and such so it doesn't give me any detail i've got these pictures to look at and then i've just got random De- and details. I remember. De- I always remember really minor details. So I sort of, you know, tell yeah. these stories in that sort of way. So that I think that's what this book's going to be about. Fabulous. You had some magazine covers. What about album covers? Did you get a chance to do any album covers? Um, I did do some album covers. I did some work around album covers. I can't think. Um, there's a there's an album just come out, uh, just been reissued for. On record store day with Ian McCulloch from Echo Number One, so we did a fun cover with him. Um, did the first Travis album cover. Did a lot of press okay. sessions with bands. Yeah. Um, probably done more classical album covers. Must have done about a dozen with the Liverpool Philharmonic. With Philharmonic, yeah. That's a good gig. That really is a good gig. I've only photographed um, not a full orchestra, but I've photographed an orchestra. And it was it's ducking and diving and weaving and finding the right angles, you know. Trying, um, yeah. yeah, trying to find that, trying to find shots through like bows and yeah, and and, and just yeah. yeah. But it's amazing once you're in, if you and, and if, especially if you're on the platform and you're. If, you, uh, I remember the first time I, I I did it, and I don't think it was Vasily Petrenko. I think it was a, a, an earlier could conductor, and they put me in in the, like in some rehearsal in the violins. Right in the middle of the first violins, wow! And I just, I nearly froze as I was taking pictures. And I sort of looked, and one of them sort of just winked at me. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, the sound is like the, you're right in the yeah. middle of it. And what sort of buzz do you get from doing an exhibition? Just get nervous, really. <laughs> I, don't know. I yeah, I get. Um, I don't know. I get really excited about taking pictures. I really love putting them. I love putting them together and laying it, you know, laying it out and seeing. Sp- Stories come together and that. I think I, I reckon I, I've got. If I thought back on 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 anything previous, I'd be like, oh, the other. I just think of the fear or whatever that that you know the those last minute sort of yeah. when everything's perfect and everything you're happy with everything and then suddenly the nerves kick in. Yeah. I, I suppose it goes back to uh, when did you actually first show work to somebody else that you. Shot. I mean, when you were thinking about being professional, I guess you had to show a portfolio of sorts. Yeah, we would have showed portfolios, and, and I would. I did go. To, you know, I went to see the Enemy, and I went to see Sounds magazines and places mm-hmm. like that in the early yeah. days. I used to phone magazines up and say, "Oh, you know, I, there's this club in Liverpool that you should be writing about," and then you know, and I would send them some pictures, and it sort of, sort of went from there. Really, that's how I started getting in editorially, and then locally I was photographing things, and somebody came along and said, "Oh, do you want an exhibition at the Open Eye?" So it was. Um, I saw my first exhibition. Was, yeah, it was my first exhibition. It was a, a portrait exhibition there. Yeah. Uh, you have a vast archive. What about prints and selling prints? How does that come about? And are you uh, pushing it as a way of an income? I don't push it, but I do 
sell them online. I sell them on the website every now and again. And there's a with my partners. We're working in Dog Aragon, Conway Valley, where we live. There's a there's a, a shop called Cog, which is all like crafters and makers and yeah. people, most all local actually. And we've got our own section. My partner sells hair work. She's a painter and an artist. And and I'm going. I'm selling prints there. So we're sort of we're open. Well, it's it's been closed for a month and it's all getting redone up and it's uh and that's re reopening this week I think yeah this week so I, and I've actually just bought my own printer so I've got to, I've got to start got sort to of start. making more of it um, yeah, yeah so I've always just sort of bought prints in but now I'm I've sort of like I'm really I'm really excited to start working on my own prints and just seeing them being able to just you know go in the other room and print something out. So where where next, Mark? Well, I've got this work I'd like to start in the, along the coast, without a doubt. And, yes. And the next thing I've I've got is the portraits that we did in Colwyn Bay that I, I, are then now going to be shown in Coid Petha in Colwyn Bay. That's fantastic. You know, that's going to happen in, in very soon. Yeah. Uh, now, final question for me: How do you find Wales? I I love it. I mean, I've I've never lived anywhere else. You know, never. I never wanted to, and then we just ended up, by various circumstances, moving to Wales. And it, it's just, it's home. Get really stressed going to the city. I love the work. I love family and, and the people, and mm. you know. But you, you 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 come back and you just. I always get the train, and you just you know you get the Flint Coast, and it doesn't matter. I mean, the trains. I'm not going to start moaning about the trains, but the trains can be, the trains are packed, and yes. what, you hit that the Flint Coast, and then when it, it it crosses a rail, and then you go down that sort of that yes. coast past Abergavenny and Colm. Oh, it's just and you know, and then we because li- we live in the valley, we can get the the single track sort of Blanai to Clandid, no train, so it's like right. and you're just like oh, calm. It's just <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, Mark McNulty. Thank you very much for a wonderful, lovely conversation. Thank you. I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you.